before we started recording, you made like a kind of metaphor with like the slime. Like, can you talk more? About that? <laughs> yeah. Um. So. Now to a dire warning about climate change. According to a new report, experts say that we have until 2030 to avoid catastrophe. Snails obviously leave these trails, and what the trails do is help other snails find them. Will always continue to fascinate me about ecopolitics in general, as that it is thinking about what lingers and what residue is left behind and things that we discard, but how can we move those forward with us? Hi everybody, welcome to the Poetry Vlog. Today we have my good friend, Woogie <laughs> Bay. Woogie, will you introduce yourself? Yeah, um, I'm Woogie Bay. Um, I recently graduated from the University of Washington Bothell's MFA program. Um, and outside of that, I interned for Wave Books and I'm trying to start an eco-poetics journal called Snail Trail. Perfect. Also, mm -hmm. small plug for Wave Books. They are the best to get desk copies from and to teach in classes. Mm -hmm. It's really, it's really great. So shout out to Wave Books. You're basically my favorite press to teach from. <laughs> Students, you probably all have every class at least one Wave Books book, and that's partly why. Mm -hmm. um, and then Snail Trail Press. Tell us a little bit more about it. So it's an eco poetics press. We kind of use that term like pretty widely. Yeah. Mostly, it means like. A as long as people are thinking consciously and caringly about what they're writing and how it impacts the environment, including living and non-living organisms and people and all that, um, we consider it eco-poetics. And um, we just wanted to create a journal where um, these kinds of ideas about environment and neutrality and respect and care could be explored. Um, and with a little more experimental yeah. kind of focus. Perfect. Um, it's amazing. I'm excited for it to come out. I've been following the updates online. Making paper Perfect. for the covers. So That's exciting. yeah, so it'll be it's very it's DIY. Really exciting. <laughs> awesome. Um, and I'm excited too that you mentioned that it's eco poetics. So mm -hmm. folks that are viewing, if you're studying like what are eco poetics, it basically means poetics that are highly aware of the environment mm -hmm. and ways to be a little bit more um, sustainable mm -hmm. in our relationship within mm -hmm. different environments. <laughs> but we are definitely going to talk about ways to build like community as well as like starting places for writing, mm -hmm. right? As like these small kind of like um, almost like shifting shapes, like tracks and trails yeah. that are kind of like not where we normally look. Mm -hmm. So it'd be like super easy. I know that we always talk about this as friends actually, mm -hmm. but oftentimes students too when they start a class are like, how do I write the next like Nobel Prize winning poem, mm -hmm. right? Or like how do I be part of this big literary scene mm -hmm. or like how do I get to like every reading or I need to perform on a stage with like a huge audience and a lot of like the work we're doing which actually like the coalition <laughs> and versus the smallness yeah. is like coalitional building is actually in the very 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 small kind of worlds that you would otherwise erase by just kind of trying to get higher up in what you already know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so can you talk a little bit more about like snails? You can talk about your press, mm -hmm. um, your own experiences with community spaces and organizing. Mm -hmm. Woogie was modest, but is like an organizer <laughs> shorter than there. Um, so <laughs> um, I mean, I even want to think about like, so Chelsea and I and our friends Abby and Caitlin, we did a reading back in May at Open Books in Seattle. Mm -hmm. Um, and that to me, I feel like is, um, what we're talking about, like building community in like very small ways. Um, but also, yeah, we just did it. Nobody asked us, nobody reached out as like part of their reading series. We wanted to do it. So we reached out to open yeah. books and we kind of created this space. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, organizer extraordinary. <laughs> we um, created that space and you know I feel really lucky because we have that community and these like really incredible friendships but it does smart I mean start very <laughs> start very small it starts with friends and it starts with people who share interests in poetry and just want to build community as opposed to like you said like climbing a kind of um, 
poetry ladder, which may yeah. be unattainable or maybe not, might not even be what people want. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think just like taking that action, I mean, because so many venues are so supportive and they'll be so happy to like host a reading. Yeah. Um, even if it's not like affiliated Which I think people with, don't know. Because yeah. like, I didn't know that until mm -hmm. you taught me that. I thought, oh, well, the venue has to invite you or otherwise you're a burden. Yeah. But I didn't realize like, of course, you're bringing like potential mm -hmm. sales mm -hmm. into the shop. Yeah. Um, and they're like creating a space for the community. Mm -hmm. It's always fun to like experience poetry with people who aren't, who you'd otherwise experience it with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe. So like there's, there's that element in terms of like public facing. I'm also thinking about, before we started recording, you made like a kind of metaphor with like the slime. like that they leave behind and that's how yeah. they like find each other uh -huh. and stuff. Can you talk more about that? <laughs> yeah, um, so our press is called Snail Trail Press. Mm -hmm. um, there are many kind of definitions to that, like actual like snail slime, like snails obviously leave these trails and what the trails do is sometimes depending on like the snail or the type of snail, like help other snails find them or like kind of are like a map for other snails and directions on top of like the snail slime, like pretty much like helping the environment, like helping yeah. um, things decompose and all that stuff. So I, I mean, it's like a really useful yeah. slime, like yeah, yeah, yeah. gross. <laughs> Um, I want to make sure that we get to your poems right off the bat. Okay. So will you open by reading some of your own work for us? Yes. It's, they're not titled. It's a draft that I've been working on for my thesis. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, As it goes in an yes. MFA. <laughs> <clears throat> so they are not titled. <laughs> but I will go. Mm -hmm. In bread and flowers, in blood and blore, some child disposed in crumb, Tunnels of prayer and cinnamon empty. When you rummage the bag, purse, pocket, was it your love in place of heat or syrup on the lip? Spoke affection and hunger, eat a peach, another. Had you pinched, then chewed, the pigeons flown to our balcony full of shit and rice, plate set next to metal, griped about weather, have you? Have you eaten, you asked, which I mistook for anger but grief? Poke those ribs, the corpse, not mine in your mouth already. Have you turned over from the pounding that made your flesh so tender? One, when you tenderize the meat. Two, pull apart the limbs. Three, slow and slow. Four, wrapped in foil. Five, stirring occasionally. Six, salt to taste. Ate the fatty portion, tasted of dog, tasted full and dripping, your palm pressed against checkered tile, tasted memory redrawn from blue and flowers, a dress sewn, a muzzle torn, tasted tame in front of friends who offered help, did you not serve dinner, tasted warm from pressure wrapped in flesh, tasted sharp in that hand that cut the treat and asked for more. Was a white corner, then saw a hole, was stained and flaked, was not blood, but pepper, was streaked on white, was ingredients, water, was parceled, plucked, was your back hunched in a red bin in which you bathed the mung. One from the sprout, soaked in water, two beneath the skin, three fried and stirred, four on high heat, five to bark, six a bruise. Read yeah. and then read again. Okay. You yeah. don't really have much. <laughs> I, first of all, <laughs> I love that. I want to make a couple quick notes about what strikes me when you read. Okay. It is it starts off very like what I call poet voice. Right? I'm like, oh no, it's going to be in poet voice. Or it's yeah. like, da, 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 da. but it's not. Uh -huh. That's what's so amazing about it. Like you manage to make a really, really soft inflection around something like tenderizing happen mm -hmm. without having it be tender. <laughs> that makes sense. And I love how your breath picks up mm -hmm. until we're like in this kind of visceral scene with you. Yeah. Um, and it, when looking at the page as well, mm -hmm. you do a really effective way of kind of pacing yourself according to the line breaks. Um, so just in terms of reading, uh -huh. I think you're like a phenomenal, <laughs> phenomenal reader. Um, so you all had the pleasure of hearing it. In terms of the content which strikes me about your poems is that it traffics in this extremely visceral scene. And it's something like a scene. Like every time I feel like I'm gripping onto something, it slips back off in a kind of horror way. 
like yeah. right like there's like blood it's like what you had a line about um um beet tender the pounding that made your flesh so tender yeah it was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um that was very long. go ahead go ahead <laughs> no i mean that is a um comment that i've been like kind of surprised to hear about the way that people think about my work is that you are like slipping into and slipping out of or like taking being taken out of yeah I didn't really notice that but now as I'm writing more and reading rereading my work I'm like yeah. I did notice that yeah <laughs> yeah um something for viewers who are interested in like writing practice you have a lot of recurrent images that get recycled right mm -hmm. um especially around like dogs and meat mm -hmm. um and then also around like wetness mm -hmm. if that makes sense and it seems like you're also in between violence and, and kind of like a stepping away from the violence mm -hmm. how how does that function for you in your writing and why did you pick this poem and how does that correspond to what you want to talk to you about today I rewrite the same poem like several times into different poems yeah. so I think that's where the repetition comes from mm -hmm. but it is a way for me to like think about and like keep rethinking what I'm writing, what I'm trying to say. Um, I have, it's, I don't think it's like commitment issues, but I definitely like, I'm always trying to like look elsewhere. And Sometimes like folks will jump when they start writing poetry, right? For the like, I'm gonna write a love poem. I'm gonna write like a telling how messed up the world is poem, or I'm gonna tell like a um, hate poem, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Here's my story of who I am in a poem. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? And like, you're like flipping that and mm -hmm. you're like how do you start with like the trails or like the tiny things that you might not always pay attention to mm -hmm. um so yeah so how that affected your my, it's very interview my writing question. yeah I know, yeah like, i kind of <laughs> feel like that's maybe the most important takeaway um that's an yeah no that's an interesting question mm -hmm. um i always i feel like i mentioned this in my other video <laughs> i always write new poems out of old poems yeah. or things that I've encountered. So like, um, I always feel like I'm in dialogue with either another writer or like a past like draft yeah. of a poem. Um, it's never, it doesn't ever feel new, which is why I think the garbage and the snail slime and compost poetics in general, it's like really interesting to me because it is this kind of like cyclical, like, um, yeah, like decomposing and then being made new kind of pattern. Yeah, and yeah. that's the only way that I've in recent years been able to write poetry. Right. Yeah, and I I love I, I personally love this process process because it feels like in the new poem there's like residue it's like residue and it yeah. is a trail and it's just always like connected in a way which I really like and um I think that's kind of what's always fascinated me and what will always continue to fascinate me about eco poetics in general is that it is thinking about what lingers and how and what residue is left behind and things that we discard but how can we move those forward with us yeah. in a productive like way you know yeah. so yeah i'm wondering if like the sort of desire for and the the um pleasure in kind of like reworking and repurposing old poems or writing in response to and inspiration of and kind of like working with something else corresponds to that kind of pulling away from feeling compelled to produce poems mm -hmm. like it was a similar sort of like there's so much material mm -hmm. that sometimes it is like it is oftentimes a creative and intellectual effort mm -hmm. to assemble things mm -hmm. that are already out there yeah and kind of like put them together if that makes sense yeah um that is actually interesting given that um, we've both talked about this, but like over the past like year and few months, like just finding more joy in like the facilitation of poetry communities and yeah. readings and stuff like that, as opposed to actually producing poetry. So like if I'm producing poetry, it feels like a kind of curation yeah. as opposed to just like simply like as opposed to just me like always writing and generating, like yeah. I'm curating and I really like yeah. that way of thinking about it. Yeah. And, um, your projects are also like really project project, right? Yeah, I, I write pretty project based. Yeah. yeah. I can't <laughs> I can't write single poem. 
I can't either. <laughs> but I also, like to write poems, so I can do project, I guess. <laughs> I can't like imagine my poems like living individually. I think that's why like I need yeah. I need them to like communicate with like other pages okay. in Which the entire manuscript. Which also doesn't lend yeah. itself. So we could go back <laughs> to like social media episodes, right? Like mm -hmm. Azura's, and I think in other ones we've referenced this, but in poetry, it's so much about like the poem that can be like retweeted or reposted mm -hmm. or like packaged nicely yeah. on an online you know what I mean but like it doesn't lend itself to kind of like sinewy projects yeah you know the, where like things are kind of like interconnected and long and mm -hmm. if you put one poem in a journal it doesn't stand up on its own yeah. I actually have had people who like don't like project books because of that they're like the poem needs to stand on its own mm -hmm. and my whole like system rejects <laughs> that my whole body is yeah, like, I rejected it too. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> no but that also takes the pressure off of having to complete a poem because then yeah. you kind of know you mm -hmm. have the next parts of the series mm -hmm. to tease it out yeah. um so i think it can also be like easier than thinking i have to write this poem and now it's gonna like mm -hmm. be this big thing and blah 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 yeah this is our not so hot take that covers up our real hot take which is it would be great if when we talk about poetry we talk less about a finished product that will get you mm -hmm. to the top and a lot more about writing about these kind of unexpected smaller pieces mm -hmm. that are repurposed and writing in ways that kind of like recycle and repurpose mm -hmm. and writing ways that connect people yeah. in like small ways mm -hmm. like all the tiny connections um so that is what snails and have to do with poetry thank you so much for being here today thank you for having me <laughs> and remind everyone where they can find you online um, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Q O D N R L. Perfect. The links to all of that are in the description below. Um, so if you're a writer and you want to submit your writing and you're really jiving with our philosophy of writing, now you also have somewhere to submit. Yeah. Yay. So you got an extra bonus. <laughs> and um, it's in print and online, and it's a beautiful little journal that we hand bind. So. Oh my yeah. goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna submit. <laughs> Please, you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So check that out and submit to it if you're a writer. Um, all levels, all mm -hmm. different, varying stages. Mm -hmm. Definitely encouraged, and especially if you feel like this philosophy is yours, um, as well. And of course, the poetry vlog is on Twitter as the poetry vlog. Mm -hmm. I always just go to the poetryvlog.com. So the and then poetry and then v l o g vlog.com, and all of the links to everything are there from the podcast to the YouTube to the Instagram. To the oh yeah thanks <laughs> she's obviously better at youtube than me i'm like it's there it's there <laughs> like you <digging> out <laughs> so click down below like and subscribe